The next workflow I want to discuss is compound discovery, where we've got different mining algorithms that enable us to detect molecular features or find features out of the data files, and this is useful for database searching or for formula generation. So really an untargeted approach compared to the target suspect screening approaches we've seen previously. For this, I am going to open my default method to ensure that all the parameters are reset to the default settings. I will open my data file. In this case, I'm using a MS data file. Data has only been acquired in the top MS mode. For my compound discovery, you'll see now we have a limited number of compound mining algorithms, depending on the, the data type we, we have loaded. That is, TOF MS data. The parameters for compound discovery will be found under the Find Biomolecular Features submenu item. And in this case, we are going to focus on small molecules from chromatographic data. It can also be applied to infusion type data and for large molecules. For now, we will keep the values default and I will show you some of the behaviors of these filter peak filters. In this case, the first one applies to extracted spectra and we will see subsequent menus have values that are applying to the chromatogram features. In this species, we will be looking for the protonated, sodiated in our positive data file. For charge state, we will deal with common organic molecules and these settings will be kept with default for now. For mass filters, a inclusion or exclusion list can be added here to exclude certain features. The mass defect filtering can be used to select for specific types of elements like chlorine or a phosphate backbone. And the mass defect filter is quite useful, which we can touch on later. So for the extraction, we will just run this workflow without any of the library matching or formula generation options. We can see 130 different features were found, molecular features, and we will sort these by height and gauge whether these are high intensity enough features to, to, to deal with. So I'm again right click and dragging on the axes to see where some of these very low intensity features occur. So for this compound 42, we can see two ions have been found. The one is found as a protonated, the other is sodiated. And you can see that the area thresholds at the moment are set at 1700 and that value uh, really applies to the spectral data we're getting, the MS spectrum results. And if we have, if we set this value higher, we can then exclude certain of these low intensity masses. The other filters we saw, the compound filters, would apply to the peak heights and the peak areas here you are obtaining. Notice with the molecular feature extraction algorithm that we now get a value called the volume instead of the area, and that represents the sum of the total volume of all the different charge states, as well as a weighted value encompassing the retention type. So let's apply a peak height or extraction peak height threshold of a thousand and rerun that workflow and see if that reduces our 130 compounds down. Now we can see 94 molecules have been found and it's worthwhile evaluating part of the spectra to see what the typical noise is out of your range. You can do this by going to the navigator view, select a region in your chromatogram, range select that and if you start zooming again this is a right click and drag to the low level noise region 
you can start seeing where we have definitive features or where do we start getting into the noise chemical noise where we don't have isotope patterns and for this I've kind of established that it's around a thousand height count so from our 94 features we can then sort these by height or by volume and gauge what are some of the largest features being identified. We can right click and say select all, which will also give us an idea how this, the extracted compound chromatograms now overlay with the TIC. And you can see most of our features in the TIC have been found. This is a set of standards we've injected and I know my diazepam compound elutes at 8.3 minutes. And therefore, I will evaluate the quality of the extracted spectra with this. So as you can see, so as you can see with the diazepam molecule at 8.3 minutes, we can see that various different charge adducts have been grouped together by the algorithm because it's found them as co-eluting features and it's even found the dimeric sodiated version. So the next step is really trying to predict the formulas if this was a true unknown sample. So the next step is where we can start predicting the formula with certain element limits if we had some idea of what is in the sample. In the identification tag under generate formulas, I can make sure that I have different charge states, charge carriers selected, as well as include any elements that I need to if this is a sample coming from a system that contains bromine, I would add bromine in this list as an additional molecule as is. In this case this was just a standard and we will keep the default settings. For the limits we can also set these to for the different data types. This can be the size of the maximum neutral mass can also be increased for large molecule type molecular feature extractions. For now I'm not going to annotate any fragment spectrum. We don't have any fragment information from this data file. So in my workflow I will now identify by formula generation and rerun that method workflow. Of our 93 compounds, I now want to go back to my diazepam peak at 8.3 minutes. And now you can see it's predicted a formula. It's proposed the formula for our diazepam molecule. In this case, it's proposing that there is a chlorine. And if we look at the different adducts, the different adducts have also been proposed with the same formula. So the formula results for that can be seen ranked in the compound identification results. And in this case, you can see all the species that the formula was applied to and the PPM mass error for that formula. The scoring is then also ranked by how well different charge carriers how well the formula fits on those different charge carriers. So you can see of the formula C16H13 chlorine N2O corresponds to diazepam. Now we can do a additional identification using a compound library. In my PCDL manager I can see I've got the diazepam entry with a formula and some of this information will be used depending on the data file, whether you have MSMS data files or not, to improve the formula prediction and matching during the molecular feature extraction. In this case, I've specified my database to help with molecular feature identification. So we screening against our PCDL database. I've also moved the formula generation only to when no database hits are identified. For additional settings in database searching 
in the database searching you can also set whether you have a retention time in your database and whether this also needs to be, be confirmed. Rerunning this workflow now which runs somewhat faster than a find by formula or target suspect screening workflow. We can now see of the 94 features extracted by molecular feature extraction, 89 of them were identified. And we will look at our diazepam molecule and see if the right identification has occurred. In this case, we can see the diazepam molecule has been confirmed. And so our database contains three different entries for isobaric species with the same formula, and that is diazepam, mazindol, chloromethqualone. The three different entries were identified and you can see we need additional MSMS information for confirmation whether and what molecule really this is. Ideally, if we want to confirm w which compound really was present, we would need to create target MSMS or auto MSMS methods that fragment this molecule and produce fragment ion spectra, which then can be correlated to databases. This can be done fairly easy in the software if we say file export MSMS inclusion list, we can now select either highlighted or all of the identified compounds for setting up a target MSMS inclusion list. We can then select certain precursors and we can have different charge states selected depending on whether we're doing auto MSMS or targeted MSMS. And this can then be imported into a acquisition method and then we can generate the target MSMS data file, which hopefully I will show in the next video how this ties in and how we can get more definitive information once we've done a targeted approach.